This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Today, Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban faces his biggest crisis yet. The US Supreme Court hears arguments about abortion, and Lukashenko undermines Putin. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Wednesday the 27th of March, 2024. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban may be facing his biggest political crisis yet. After both Orban's president and justice minister resigned last month over a child sexual abuse scandal, now a leaked recording has proven that government officials have been involved in corruption. Yesterday, a tape recorded in January 2023 was released by Peter Magyar, a lawyer formerly close to the government, of his ex-wife and Orban's former justice minister, Judith Varga. In the recording, Varga detailed an attempt by aides to Orban's cabinet chief to remove certain parts from documents in a graft case involving Pal Volna, a former state secretary to the justice ministry when Varga was minister. Now, Volna resigned in 2021 after prosecutors accused him of taking bribes, but has not pleaded guilty. Prosecutors are seeking a jail term for Volna, though, and said in the statement that they would analyse the tape provided by Magyar. Now, this case is a big blow to Orban, and it's the first case when someone from its inner circle has spoken out. Unsurprisingly then, the Hungarian opposition were quick to respond once the details of the tape emerged. One opposition politician argued that this case is clear evidence that Hungary's justice system is tarnished and under political influence, with her adding that it's not free and not independent. Thousands of people also took the streets of Budapest last night near the Hungarian parliament, demanding that the chief prosecutor and Orban resign. It's not just Orban either. Judith Varga was a high-profile politician in Hungarian politics and was supposed to lead Orban's party into the European elections. In a post on Facebook, Varga did not dispute the comments she made in the recording, but accused her ex-husband of domestic violence, claiming that she made the statements under duress. The couple, who shared three children, were often cast as a model nuclear family, upholding traditional family values. However, this image completely crumbled following first their divorce and then Varga signing off a pardon for a man who forced children to retract allegations of abuse by the director of a children's home. Regardless, this leaked recording comes after weeks of Magyar attacking Orban online and in public, organising anti-government rallies attended by thousands. And that's made Magyar somewhat of a political nemesis to Orban, with him even planning to launch a new pro-EU party to challenge Orban. The opposition parties thus far have failed to dent Orban's grip on power. But according to a major opposition politician, Magyar's intervention could signal a broader push against Orban. Now, there's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine or just search for us in your podcast app of choice to listen along. In the US this week, the Supreme Court has been hearing arguments for and against the limiting of access to an abortion pill called Mifepristone. And this is the most serious abortion-related case in the country since the overturning of Roe v. Wade two years ago, which has seen hundreds of protesters and counter-protesters gathering outside of the courts. President Joe Biden's administration is appealing a decision by a lower court which ruled to roll back actions by the US Food and Drug Administration in 2016 and 2021, making access to Mifepristone easier. On Tuesday, the Supreme Court heard arguments from the Biden administration against the plaintiffs, who are a group of anti-abortion doctors. Using three studies from Gynuity Health Projects, a New York-based women's health research group, the doctors claim that the pill is unsafe, despite its regulatory approval in 2000. However, Gynuity's president said that the study's conclusions actually broadly support easier access to the medication. Not only that, the Supreme Court judges also seem sceptical that the plaintiffs have the necessary legal standing to pursue the case. That's because the doctors are claiming imminent injury as a result of the FDA's actions, saying that they'll be forced to violate their consciences by handling emergency complications which could arise in women who take the pill. But there are already federal laws in place to prevent medical staff from being forced to carry out abortions. And on top of that, the doctors haven't actually provided any evidence they participated in such a procedure before.
Moving on to Belarus now, where President Alexander Lukashenko appears to be undermining President Putin's narrative that Ukraine was involved somehow in Moscow's concert hall attack last week. Despite ISIS claiming responsibility, Putin claimed that a window had been prepared by Ukraine for the attackers to escape to Ukraine. Lukashenko has rejected this narrative though, suggesting that the attackers were instead heading for Belarus. About this, he said that they could not enter Belarus. Their handlers knew that it would be a very bad idea for them to try and enter Belarus because Belarus immediately reinforced security measures. Now, it's reported that Lukashenko received reports from Russian authorities minutes after the attacks began. And as a result of these reports, he put Belarusian units on combat alert in order to prevent them from being able to enter his country. Additionally, it also seems that Putin's own inner circle don't believe that Ukraine was involved. Reports have suggested that Putin was present in a discussion where officials agreed that there was no connection between the attack and Ukraine. Moving to Thailand now, where the country has taken another step towards marriage equality. In essence, the lower house has passed a new bill that gives recognition to same-sex marriage and allows same-sex couples to adopt children. Now, for this bill to actually become law, it needs the approval of the upper house, the senate, and then royal endorsement. But the bill did pass through the lower house with 400 votes in favour of the 415 lawmakers present. The bill additionally gives LGBTQ plus couples equal rights to marital tax savings, to inherit property, and to give medical treatment consent for incapacitated partners. As things stand, it looks likely that it will get the approval required and become law by the end of 2024. And that would, in turn, make it the only Southeast Asian country to recognise same-sex marriage. Plus, Thailand already has a ban on discrimination over gender identity and is subsequently seen as one of the most progressive countries in the region. And finally, good news for democracy in Europe, as yesterday the EU Council adopted the EU's regulation on media freedom. These regulations prevent authorities from putting pressure on journalists and editors, such as banning house searches or installing monitoring software, with restrictions on spyware like Pegasus included too. It also requires heads of media houses to be appointed by transparent and non-discriminatory procedures, and media companies will have to indicate whether the state is a direct or indirect owner. However, not everyone's happy about the changes. The new legislation was approved by 26 out of 27 members, with only Hungary voting against it, accusing it of being a censorship law. Now, understanding what exactly is going to happen here is a little tricky, requiring you to evaluate a lot of different information from often partial sources. It'll be sensible then to begin improving your own critical thinking skills so that you can stay sharp and better understand what's going on. And, well, our sponsor, Brilliant.org, can help you do exactly that. Brilliant is the online learning platform that's designed specifically to teach you everything from maths, data analysis, programming, and AI from the ground up. You don't need a fancy degree or to have dedicated hundreds of hours to studying any of these topics. All you need is a device with an internet connection and a spare few minutes a day. And with those few minutes, you'll be learning by actually doing. Because Brilliant allows you hands-on lessons that allow you to play around with concepts, a method that has been shown to be six times more effective than just watching lectures. What makes this even better is that this content is created by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, and more. You can try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by clicking the link in the description. That way, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.